uh, but now turned into, you know, you, you, you've uh, three times it now, you know, you, you, you've, you've accomplished, you, you've thought of it outside of the box and, and where you thought, oh my gosh, this is going to not going to be a good scenario, but you, you, you took a minute to take a step back, think through it and then strategize and then, uh, you know, go attack it. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well said. Yeah. And uh, like we say, you know, in KW, you know, if you took taking bold, uh, when you focus on expense, so uh, even in your subconscious, so always make sure to look on the bright side and always make sure to look at what um, uh, you can do and how you can resolve things versus to, you know, what's going to hold you back. Right. Uh, thank you guys. <clears throat> Good insight. Uh, let's jump to our, uh, Brokers Rich, Richard, um, what do you have for us? Well, what we wanted to talk, uh, talk about today is that on the 22nd, um, CAR uh, is coming out with a couple of new forms. You know, they, ha they, they bring out new forms twice a year in June and all, then in, in December. And there's a couple of new forms and then there's some updates to old forms. Um, so the first one I wanted to talk about, many if you'll change the slide, is uh, it is the PVOH, which is the Property Visit and Open House Advisory. So um, unfortunately, they put open house in this thing. It really doesn't have all that much to do with open house. It's mainly about uh, visiting a property and this form came about because there was a big lawsuit um, where a buyer and his, his agent went into a house and you know they really liked the house and they talked about strategy well little did they know that they were being recorded so um, and so the seller knew all about their strategy and when they said well I'll only go up to this amount of money well, guess what? They countered with that amount of money. So uh, this came from from that lawsuit, and it also talks about um, visitor safety. You know, with uh, you know, there's been a couple of uh, slip and falls because of booties and and whatnot, and um, it, and it goes over pets to be careful around pets, and you know, if you're bringing a minor to to a house, then you know, uh, uh, Mr. Buyer, you need to control your child and be, and be aware of, uh, of what what they're doing so that's the first form it's uh, it's not a mandatory form but it's not a bad form um, to use uh, Allison Silverman this would be a great form for your your listing now which has holes in the ground that people can fall through um, so uh, this this will come out on the 22nd and the next form um, is you know, many brokerages already have their square footage and lot size disclosures. Um, uh, we at Calabasas have our own. Um, and once again, it's not a mandatory form, but, um, but if you were differing from what's in the assessors, if your, your source is the assessors, but then your seller says, well, I've added 500 square foot and I want it advertised that way. If there are differing numbers, you should be using either this form or the or the one for Calabasas that that we have, um, because this puts the buyer on notice that hey, you need to do your investigation. And um, you know, there's there's a couple of suits that have gone by uh, through the brokerage. Uh, there's one ongoing now, which this this um, this form would have helped with because it talks about the property lot size and that a fence necessarily isn't at the property line. Um, and this is what's, there's a suit, suit going on right now um, that talks about that. So either if there, if you are d using a, a, a lot size or excuse me, a square footage difference uh, in your listing, you should either be using this form or the next form, many for those in Calabasas, we have our own form, um, lots, a lot of uh, footage and, and uh, acreage advisory. And it's basically saying, you know, we as the listing agents, we're not responsible for, you know, for measuring uh, 
we're not the responsible for verifying this information. You, Mr. Buyer, are responsible for it. And Richard, uh, you have, uh, you're going to talk about the revisions that, that are up. Correct. And regarding the square footage, we don't have that kind of problem mostly in th this area, but um, it is good to have the, the forms available to us. But mostly we just have postage stamp lots and they're all you know, very clean and simple. But occasionally we'll have that situation where there's an addition that isn't showing up on tax rolls yet. But in fact, I have one listing right now where it's not showing anywhere, but they have the certificate of occupancy for an extra thousand square feet. Uh, Richard, use that form. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> all right, Manny, what's the first one that comes up? All right, so the residential listing agreement, it's not major tweaks or anything to this. It's just, um, where did it go? There we go. Um, they're changing the, about the MLS getting in line with the clear um, cooperation policy. Um, change a few of the words in leased items versus leaned items with, that come with the property, like solar power, windows and doors, maybe having a lien on them because they used um, some kind of um, loan against the property, that, that kind of thing. So it just kind of tweaks some of those words. And then it really um, gets into the impact of MLS um, changes there. Just make sure um, sellers understand how important it is to use the MLS. Again, tying back to clear cooperation and then they're talking more about the marketing and again, tying back into clear cooperation to make sure that everybody understands on the seller side, how important using the MLS is to get the property sold and properly marketed. Um, goes into a little bit of opting in and opting out of internet use. And um, they're of course redoing all of our um, paragraph numbers, et cetera. And then it talks about how the broker agrees to present all offers to the seller that come in. They can't pick and choose. They can't make decisions on behalf of the seller. So it's putting that in writing back to um, the client that we're going to do what we're supposed to be doing all along anyway. Um, it also talks about the investigations and if it's an HOA that there may be certain things that the seller can't do for termite repairs, et cetera, because they um, rely on the HOA to take care of those items. Um, and then it goes, it's renaming and rewording some of the disclosures on agency, et cetera, and the confirmation of such. And um, talks a little bit more about the lockbox safety, using a lockbox and getting the consent from the seller to possibly allow an appraiser to access a lockbox if nobody's home, um, especially now with COVID, if appraise, uh, many appraisers don't want us to meet them there. But it's just tying things up, cleaning things up within the, the current world that we have right now. And one thing, Richard, I want to mention, you mentioned the HOA, it advises, uh, which is a great thing, uh, the seller that maybe you want to get those, order those docs early. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a great opportunity for listing agents when they're sitting down with their, uh, their sellers to say, look, we, we advise you um, to order them now, order them ahead of time or get, you yeah. know, we're ahead of the, so we're the, ahead of the game. So that's a great thing also. Perfect. What? And go ahead. No, uh, <clears throat> before we're going to jump to the next form, just uh, one question, a few questions over here just to address those great questions by our agents. Number one, um, is that okay to put the, uh, just back to the square footage, just to put on the MLS that, you know, buy responsible, et cetera, to double check, confirm, whatever, whatever, uh, or should we use the form instead or, or both? Uh, both. Uh, you know, it's fine to put it in the MLS and usually those remarks go into the private remarks because they're not, they're, uh, they shouldn't be in the public remarks, although I guess you could technically put them there, but, um, but you want something in writing that the buyer has signed, that they acknowledge that there may be some discrepancy and that they're responsible to do it. So I would do both. Mm -hmm. And you could also upload that form into supplements if there was really a, a major discrepancy um, or you really felt comfortable that the number that the seller's giving you is accurate. Now, now would you recommend, um, like if someone represent the buyer, right for them to initiate the signing signing this form sure 
I mean, it protects, it protects you as the, you know, when you're, when you're in a litigation, everybody likes to point fingers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if you have something in writing that your buyer has, has uh, signed that you went over with your buyer saying, Hey, you know, we, uh, we recommend that you verify all this information and, you know, in regards to a, you know, a lot size, you know, the only way to really make sure that the lot size is the lot size is to do a survey. So, um, you know, hey, just just to lay it all out. Sure. If you're working with a buyer, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would have them sign it. Especially if you can see on your own the discrepancy, then you should have, as representing your buyer, have that form completed by the seller side. I'd, I wouldn't go digging on your own for square footages. That's up to the buyer to do. Right, right. And then, and, um, go, go ahead, Rich. No, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, someone was asking, like, when is the best time to have this uh, disclosure? Well, when we have all disclosure, the, I mean, technically, the sooner the better. Like, you don't want to have people the way uh, out if you provide something that, you know, too late, that it's going to give them those, you know, few days to, to, to you know, delay the, the uh, contingency, contingency removal, or maybe surprise you with like, hey, you know, there's some kind of an issue, whatever. So the sooner the better, all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, and you know, while they're in their investigation, uh, you know, time period, where when they're doing their due diligence, don't don't hand it to them afterwards and say, well, I've already removed that contingency. You're telling me now that I should have done a survey. No, it's what you know, right at the top. You know, when when wow. you're you know when you're doing your investigations, absolutely. And Richard wanted to mention real quick something about the PD, PD V. We can't, we can't go uh, a meeting without talking some COVID form. Correct. The PD V, the current version is dated 6 2 of 2020. Um, there's a, you can access a copy through the front desk or from your office. But I have a lot of agents questioning, you know, they're kind of, kind of back to work now and missed a couple meetings and just don't know how to get started showing property. So it's the PD V, and it's dated 6 2 20. Use that form when you're going to show property. Uh, all listing agents are going to require that form. Yeah, thank you. We, we, we didn't have it to share, so I apologize for not having that uh, copy. Um, but so if you, um, uh, brokers, if you don't mind just to type in that form's name so people can just look it up afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, the question uh, relates, I guess, you know, over here as a result of the Q Corporation, what they added over here. Um, uh, NAR right now are being sued. Uh, you know, by several, like, I guess, like, you know, most like, you know, private companies and whatever, because this clear corporation kind of like, you know, affecting their ability to, uh, you know, share in the, the, the same platform. So is this gonna, is this changing anything right now? Should we be concerned about it or just follow the, the rules, guidelines, whatever is on the forms? No, it, it follow the rules. Clear cooperation isn't going anywhere now. The first, the first injunction that I believe was brought, uh, brought against NAR by TAN um, was, was dismissed. So I don't, I don't foresee it going anywhere. Um, it be, you know, it's here uh, and uh, you should be abiding by the rules because there are, I know for Kritznet users in, in the San Fernando Valley, the, the, the violation is 1% of the listing price up to the NAR maximum, which is fifteen thousand dollars, so that's a hefty fine. So you should be uh, abiding by this rule right now. And um, there is, you know, there is this period where they're going to be, you know, kind of, in, you know, looking, looking at things individually. I I was in an MLS meeting on Monday, and the um, statistics for. Um, mandatory reporting which is this is a violation of spiked so there are there are people who are who are getting dinged for this i don't think they're initiating any fines right now but um but we're right now over a month into this so uh they are going to start um they are going to start issuing fines and that's a hefty fine so <laughs> There's 244 coming soon showing in the MLS right now. That's just from the past seven days. And I think I have two myself in there. So it, they're yeah. out there. Yeah. And then uh, whoever's <clears throat> watching us right now, we, we're 
uh, we start to add those as a link to our morning emails, I believe on a daily basis, maybe it's a weekly mm -hmm. basis, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, just, just for, for you guys to, to be aware of what's out there because you know, those are the packet listings that you know, mm -hmm. as, as we used to call them. So make sure to click and see what's out there. Uh, you know, if once again, you're looking for something for your, for your client and reach out to the, to the agent. If you have any issues with uh, getting the, the, the links, et cetera, just let us know. All right, anything else guys? Nope, we're good. Thank you. No, I was going to mention that contest. I don't know if you have that still or. Uh, I no, or you, you know, I, I, you I, mean, I, there's something about this contest you don't like, many. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's me, right? I, I promise. It's to for say, your calendar. It's for your yeah. calendar that you develop. I know, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And most of you have no idea what, what, what we right now. It's like inside joke, but I, I promise. Yeah. You, text them today with the link and it's going to be fine. <laughs> no okay. All right. Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's jump to our team leader, uh, corner. Um, ladies, what do you have? Um, hold on. There we go. Go for it. 90 day action and marketing plan. You want to go over last time? Yep. I know we got totally dismissed last week. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good dialogue and we were texting and going, let's just keep this going. We can, we can go over this next week. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, good morning, everybody. And I know uh, there was quite a few of you yesterday that were, that attended the business planning workshop. So I know we all can't believe it, but we are nearing the, um, halfway mark of 2020, right? So it's really imperative for us to recommit, reevaluate our, our goals and our plans for the next six months. And then also break it down into a 90 day action and marketing plan. So as you guys know, what we are doing over the next 90 days, right? Over this third quarter, yes, I said third quarter of 2020, is we'll see the results in it the fourth quarter. Right, because as we know, especially in this crazy real estate business, we're always in 90 day cycles. So we really want to end this year strong. And with that, you put together a 90 day action mark and marketing plan, and you can even set it up in 30 day increments. Um, but it, you know, it goes into prospecting, nurturing, marketing, and communication, and transaction and revenue, uh, your revenue goals. So, uh, Hallie, did you want to take on the prospect and nurturing aspect? Yeah. So, you know, remember, be very specific about your numbers, right? This is the time for you to break those down, reevaluate what you've had before. And if you haven't had goals before, that's okay. Now is the time to start implementing them. So when you're going through your prospecting and nurturing, make sure you really have your marketing plan um, and, and how you're going to reach out, have your daily activities going, you know, how many, how many new contacts are you trying to add to your uh, command or to your Excel spreadsheet, whatever that is, in the next 30, 60, and 90 days. Is that 10 a month? Is that 10 a week? Whatever that looks like, you need to set that specific goal in mind because remember, it is a numbers game. We do kind of have to throw things at the wall a bit. So make sure you're getting very specific and measurable with that. And then also nurturing those leads that you already have right? Go back and look into your repertoire, your list of names, pull out those pieces of paper from your old open houses that you guys used to do and go back and double check with each of those people. Check in with them, nurture them, give them market updates. Uh, we've seen a lot of very interesting things happening in the market. I know, you know, even just here in Long Beach, update them with those. So reach out to them and uh, do that. Make sure you're nurturing them and nurturing that relationship. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you're putting together, let's say we're doing the, the first 30 days out of the 90 day action plan, right? So when you're looking at July, you're looking, okay, how many days am I working, mm -hmm. right? So it could be, okay, out of this month, I'm working 19 days. Okay, mm -hmm. then break it down to how many new people that you want to add to your database how many lead follow-ups you're gonna have. So then you have a set goal of what you're going to do. And then we break it down into your marketing and communication. So, you know, it just simplifies it. It's just a, 
an extension of your 411 um, in what you do on a monthly and weekly basis. And then this breaks it down even into the daily. So marketing communication. Okay, are, you, are any of you doing bomb bomb videos in your email? Your lead nurture, right? Any email newsletters, social posts, story shares, all that kind of stuff. You want to break that down. So let's say I, I want to send one newsletter out a week. Okay, so that's four for the month. One, you know, so it, so you are able to break that down. Are you going to have direct mails? Are you going to do any handwritten note cards? Really, so it's all action plan. Put that together on what you're going to do for that particular month, and then you break it to the next three months. Because if you guys really are very clear, focused, intentional, and purposeful in everything that you're doing, then you will create such momentum and you will end this 2020 stronger than you ever thought. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you are writing these and coming up again with these specific plans, putting them into your time blocking for the day right? Because that is one of the biggest things that I see you guys not doing is you have these grand plans of building a website or sending out, you know, newsletters weekly, but you're not scheduling the time to be able to accommodate it. You're literally setting yourselves up for failure. So block out that hour at the beginning of the week, really assess the time that you have slow times during the week and do some of those things that maybe aren't direct money-making activities, like scheduling those social media posts, you know, creating content for those e-blasts, um, you know, even just creating these numbers, make sure you're writing them into your daily activities. Yeah. And then just real quick to finish off on the transaction and revenue goals, you know, that, that, you know, you have your business goals for the next six months. Let's say you, your goal is to take six listings, right? Okay. That means taking one listing a month, put that in your goal, right? Are you a 50, 50 ratio on, you know, listing appointments? attended to taken. So that means you need two, right? I mean, I want you to get you up to 75, 80% list conversion rate, but that's a different story. But anyway, if you're able to break it down, say, okay, I just need one listing a month. That means I need to go on at least two appointments, how many closings I want, how many buyer consultations do I need, etc. So really breaking it down, setting the goal. So then you know what to do on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis to be able to hit those transaction and revenue goals for uh, quarterly and then to get your goals for the year, uh, 2020. Yeah. And make sure that you're drawing it out too. Just like Stephanie said, use the MREA economic model. That's to, that's here for you. That's your resource. If you don't have the Excel worksheet, I, you know, email any of us TLs. We're here to help support you and run you through it, but make sure you're, you're figuring out your conversion rate when it comes to leads and appointments, because the MREA economic model really focuses on, you know, how many appointments are you converting into actual transactions, but really keep in mind, how many leads do you need in order to convert into an appointment? So really think on the grand scheme of those things. If you have to make a hundred calls a week to nail down one appointment, that's an opportunity for you right now to focus on in the next 90 days, you know, sit down with your TLs, you know, meet with your accountability partners and, and, uh, work on your scripting, work on your conversion. Um, you know, just, just really push hard because as we know, our work right now is not going to bring money right now. We're working for the future. So it's just so important that, that, that now more than ever, we're digging in deep and really being very specific about what we're trying to achieve. Awesome stuff. Thank you both, Holly, Stephanie, good stuff. And whoever, uh, if you missed the uh, uh, training yesterday, the um, business plan session, you can go back to our um, uh, YouTube channel and check it out over there or go to the, um, to the KW Shares, the video tab and, and uh, see the, the entire video. Uh, great stuff. Now, before the uh, stats, market stats, we're going to share from Broker Metrics. Um, Brian, Jojo, <clears throat> Brian, are you there? Yes. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Brian McKim with House America Financial. We uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we last chatted. Um, I want to introduce you to the newest team member at House America Financial. Yay. He's a great guy with a lot of experience. His name is Jojo. Jojo, you're on the line. You want to say hi? Hi, everybody. Oops, clicked the wrong button. Sorry. Hi. How are you guys? Perfect. Yeah, we can see. We can hear you. Uh, 
Looks like you're in a cubicle in Calabasas. Yes, sir, I am. Okay, just want to make sure. You got my signage. <laughs> yeah, it looks familiar. Familiar <laughs> view. That's awesome. <clears throat> Welcome, Jojo. Welcome, Welcome aboard, Jojo. He's yeah. got a lot of experience. He's a very knowledgeable loan officer. So himself, along with myself, we're going to be uh, providing even more service to the agents uh, in Calabasas who are excited uh, for this next, uh, this next venture. Um, in terms of the market, um, not a whole lot of change in the last uh, couple of weeks. Rates remain fantastic. Uh, we're seeing some rates in 30-year fixed around 2.875 or 3%. Uh, some 30, uh, some 15-year fixed rates are in the 2.625, 2.75 range. So rates are fantastic. Uh, very competitive market out there. So I would encourage any realtor, any anyone who's looking to buy, any buyers to really reach out to Jojo or myself probably sooner than you might think because we're just seeing you know, offer uh, deadlines being very short, short contingencies, quick closes. So from our perspective, the market's still very competitive. Yeah, Jojo? Um, I echo what Brian is saying. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'd like to remind people this morning or this afternoon at one o'clock, we're going to do a full deep dive into the market updates and what's going on at House America Financial and where we think market might be headed give you a, little, a flavor also what's going on in the economy, a little taste and what's going on with the rates and the economy. So 1 p.m. today, I'd love to see you guys. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, and feel free to, uh, to chime in when I'm gonna present the, uh, the trends afterwards, <clears throat> if it's aligned with what you just, uh, just mentioned, which is gonna be interesting. Um, John, John Macias with uh, Clearmark. Hey, how are you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Yeah. I hope you guys are doing well. Good to, good to see everybody again. Um, yeah, I was just going to give, you know, just a, just, a, just a quick little overview, kind of something that uh, is really kind of top of mind, I think, with everybody that's, uh, that's out there and, and thinking about overcoming barriers to fair housing. Um, I don't know if I had shared with you in the past, over the last 30 years in the, in the industry, I've spent a lot of time um, in, in the fair housing uh, aspect on, on, real, on the real estate side, uh, kind of uh, having the really great opportunity to sit in a lot of different uh, housing summits, different organizations that are, are really kind of push forward the opportunity for housing uh, for people in, in minority sectors or that have been disadvantaged in certain areas throughout the United States. Spent a lot of time with the different associations, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. I sat on that board for about 10 years since it was founded. Uh, also with ARIA, the Asian Association, and NAREB, which is uh, the African American Association, um, as well as a few other uh, associations uh, throughout the United States in the real estate sector. So I just thought, it, you know, I, would, I was reading a couple of different articles and, and, and looking at a couple of different things on YouTube that were, I thought would be kind of relevant and just kind of just bring to people's attentions that how important it is, you know, as real estate agents that you guys are really kind of perceived as gatekeepers and, and, and directors into certain neighborhoods, certain areas. And it's super important that I think that, you know, we keep, it, it, you know, in, in your, your mindset, um, you know, next time you're working with clients of other cultures, backgrounds, um, that you're, you're in a position and that you can speak intelligently and kind of keep that open mind uh, to be, to give equal, you know, professional service, uh, uh, making sure that you uh, treat everybody fairly. And those are things that I think people should be, are you, real, you guys, realtors should be thinking about. Um, and some of the, the really cool things I think uh, that I, I remember, looking at this uh, one particular, um, I think it was a, a blog from uh, the, per the Perception Institute. I don't know, I think it was shared with NAR as well. It talked about BRIC, uh, B standing for belonging, R respect, uh, I for investment and individuation, uh, C for conversation, and K for kindness. Those are kind of things to keep top of mind when you're transacting, when you're dealing with the public and, 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 and people, I think, of, of different beliefs or cultures that you're going after and, and working with, especially in LA, we're such a melting pot for the you know multi diverse cultures and and 
and, and people coming there, you know, they're so, it's such a desirable place to live. Uh, so I think it's just something to, for us to kind of keep in mind, think about, uh, think about who your network is, you know, who, who, do you, who do you network with on a consistent basis? Um, um, how, can you, how can you start to expand that? Are there certain areas that are pretty culture cent culturally centric, uh, like neighborhoods? Be aware of those when you know that the more information that you have and the more information that you can give your clientele, I think it's super important. Um, one of uh, I thought was a uh, kind of really cool uh, thing for I think for offices to really kind of take into uh, consideration were um, it was a uh, let me see I'm going to share with you it talked it talked about making sure that in each you know in each of your offices or each of your teams that you guys have some sort of uh, um, uh, of real estate practices that align with your values so to develop some sort of protocols that provide clients with equal treatment how to manage your mindset so that you give interpersonal and inter interactions with clients the respect uh, and that it comes out of successful uh, interaction with them making sure that you have uh, certain scripts or Kind of practicing those types of, of conversations that may come up uh, that talk about certain school districts certain areas uh, of 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 uh, that are very culturally uh, you know there's like certain areas that they can say segment segmented like you know you have certain areas in la you have uh, an area like you know they consider like like k-town what you know uh, koreatown chinatown uh different areas like that so be aware of those types of things that you can give people a lot of information on a lot of the different areas around um, that that would be relevant, you know, in your conversations out there. And just, I think it's making sure that you just ha are super uh, aware of this type of, uh, of of mindset that you need to have right now. And I think it's very important that things like that take place. I'm going to send out, I think, to the group here, uh, a couple of different um, links that I think would be really great to review when you get a little bit longer to uh, get an opportunity to kind of sit down and take a look uh, they're really they're really great they're they're from the different real estate organizations also I have a couple of different things from the urban institute talks about uh the uh the the amount of of uh, of real estate being acquired by certain segments within the different ethnic backgrounds so i think it's really cool uh, a cool thing for you guys to take a look at and, and really kind of educate yourself around it so that's that's my uh, little bit on this on the thank fair housing piece. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, definitely a uh, great, uh, great reminder always to focus on the right things and uh, educate ourselves, you know, regard, regards to the sensitivity of what we're experiencing in, you know, today's, uh, you know, time, you know, things still happening, right? Uh, right. So it's also good to educate ourselves professionally on, on how to do things and, uh, and, 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 and um, you know, what kind of resources to use. So thank you for sharing that as well. You're welcome. Yeah, stay, stay on the call as well because I want to get your <clears throat> insight, you know, uh, lender title as well when it comes to the, the, the trends. And I'm going to jump right now to the broker matrix. Perfect. We haven't, <clears throat> we haven't done those for, for uh, a little while. So it's time to, to, you know, go back to that and understand what we're looking, uh, looking at. I'm going to break it down to three different areas, <clears throat> three different categories. The first area is the, uh, uh, the, the northern part of our group, which is the Calabasas area. Um, and uh, you're going to see the, the, the trend by uh, active in escrow and sold. And this is for the month of May. <clears throat> so you can see on the right up here, um, uh, you know, last month compared to May of 2019. So which once again, we, we know that the pandemic definitely had a, a big impact in some categories. It's very interesting to see what it didn't impact, right? And how things are evolving really quickly. Some of you guys out there have been uh, busy and, and now you're getting busier, right? So that, that, that's all good news. So let's look at um, <clears throat> the trend once again, Calabasas area and surrounding cities. Um, uh, in escrow, look at the, uh, the, uh, the numbers, significantly lower inventory, 700 units compared to 817 uh, last month compared to May of last year. Look at the price point, uh, about 5% change. <clears throat> excuse me, the median price, right? So now the median price stands on about, you know, uh, let's just call it a 930, uh, which is, it's, 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 it's a big jump. I mean, relatively big jump from uh, May of last year. Uh, going into escrow, uh, almost the same price uh, uh, jump in, in percentages. The median stands on 849 and uh, inventory slightly 
uh, lower than last year, but not significantly lower. So it's 110 compared to 145 going into escrow, okay? What's selling, look at the numbers over here. Very interesting. That's once again, the Calabasas area and surrounding cities, <clears throat> 61 units sold last month compared to 45 in May of last year. And look at the price point, increase almost 12%. That's pretty, pretty incredible, right? That's once again, only in the month of May. Uh, we, I didn't, you know, I chose not to, to add over here the month of March and April, <clears throat> just because, you know, to have too much data, but those are definitely uh, great numbers uh, that, that we're looking at over here, at least for the month of May. Let's jump to uh, the West Side area, West Side office, active. Um, look at the numbers over here, 371 units compared to 461. So, you know, um, about 90, 90 units drop um, May to May. But look at the price point, 22% increase. That's, uh, that's a significant uh, numbers right there. And you, know, you, you, you can point out a few different elements. Of course, we all know that inventory is part of, part of them as well, but very um, interesting jump over there. What's going into escrow? The jump is only by about you know, almost 7%, just under 7% increase by price point. The median stand on um, 6, 639. Uh, number wise, not a big of a drop, something like, you know, maybe the same percentage as in Calabasas, 249 units going into escrow compared to <clears throat> almost 300 last year. And um, when it comes to the uh, closes sold, yeah, the sold numbers, um, big drop over there on the, on the units, 12 compared to 39, so that's a major drop. And the price point uh, dropped by by you know two and a half, almost two and a half percent. So so we see that there's seems like there's a lot of like overpriced inventory in that area. I didn't add the expired slide over here this time, just once again to have too much information. I'm definitely going to add it for the next team meeting. <clears throat> um, I mean the month of June stats. But uh, if you are uh, going after expired, cancelled as main source of business, go for it. This is your month. This is your time. Uh, if you don't have strategy, talk to uh, John Macias uh, with Clear uh, Title, talk to um, our, our lender partners, um, you know, Haas America and other partners, uh, uh, Alex in, in, uh, in Long Beach as well to talk strategies and, and, and different ways and approach how to go after that business. Long Beach, um, uh, so, uh, active uh, inventory, look at the numbers over here. Uh, you know, the price point is, is uh, somewhat lower, you know, in Long Beach, the average sales price over here in Long Beach. Uh, and, and, and it's pretty incredible to see like every, not just in Long Beach, but mostly here, you see like every, you know, good property that is priced slightly under, it's just a massive amount of uh, multiple offers. But look at the inventory, 770 compared to 973 last year. That's a massive drop over there. So if, if you could do the, the, the percentage drop. Um, and the, and, the, and, the, and the price point, almost no change. Okay, so, so we know it's the same type of, of, of uh, inventory when it comes to price point, but way less inventory, right? What's going into escrow? Look at the numbers over here, 249 compared to 296. Looks very familiar to the other ones as well in percentages. And the price point went up only by, you know, about um, almost just under 7% of the median price, so you know, things moving quickly. And uh, what's actually closing, look at the numbers over here, 156 inventory compared to 287. Once again, just a massive drop, almost, almost 50%, just under 50% inventory drop. And then look at the, uh, the uh, price point, jump by almost 11%, okay, month of May. That's, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, let me see just if there are any notes. Any, any thoughts, our uh, affiliates, partners, mortgage title, any, any thoughts about those numbers aligned with what you see out there? Brokers, feel free to, to, to jump in as well. I would say from my perspective as a lender of many, this is exactly what we're seeing. It's extremely uh, competitive out there and um, we are seeing some, some difficult appraisals you know, not on every deal, but we're seeing some appraisals, uh, especially on condominiums where there's recent sales, 
in the last three months, and now we have a market that's on fire. Uh, it's some, in some cases, it's it's hard to find comps. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and um, just looking at the infinite comments or the questions, uh, but but I mean I mean it is it is um, it is good to see the trend. Like we we don't really see a massive drop. Like any kind of, uh, you know, yes, there, there was definitely a halt, a hold on the, 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 how the market, you know, moved on. I mean, because of, clearly because of raw inventory, right? Or people just, you know, standing still, don't want to list right now, or buyers want to hold on for a second, or, you know, people dropping because they cannot qualify as fast. Uh, uh, source services, you know, like um, uh, county services, you know, with, with, with the county title are just, you know, closed day here and a couple of days over there because of, you know, it was COVID related or the rights afterwards. So things are slowed down, but didn't stop. And look at us now, I, I hear from more agents that things are picking up. We see in all of our um, offices that, you know, there's uh, amazing increase of uh, both, you know, refinance files, traditional just escrow, or, you know, uh, new escrows are opening, more listings. So stay focused guys, and it's, it's coming back and it's coming back strong. And, and you better have a piece of what's, what's out there as well, right? Many, was that, was that number that, in, that you said increased from April to May, uh, the increase in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the values? Is that what it was? Just the month, was, the, the, it was, was an increase that, for one month. Yeah, th thank you. That, that, that was, that was um, um, uh, May 2019 to May of this year. Okay, yeah. Because I, I had seen, you know, even I was reading a couple of uh, just reviews on L.A. and they were talking about the, the increase, you know, even though the, the inventory was pretty low and steady, you had a little bit of a hold, the, the prices were maintaining uh, and staying pretty strong and, and balanced. Um, and, you know, and I was reading some pretty kind of, you know, pred different predictions for people that are looking, that are been giving some inf info for the next, uh, for third quarter, fourth quarter of this year. And, and, they, and they anticipate that you know, there's going to be a lot of activity uh, because the affordability rate in Los Angeles is so high that people can't afford there. And they're, they're going to maybe if, if they own a home or if they are renting, that they may have to move out uh, maybe in a, in a, in a uh, you know, further away from the, from the, from the city uh, to be able to uh, afford their living uh, and also maintain their jobs. So you may see some activity around that. You may see uh, more more homes for lease. You might see uh, uh, people wanting that, that own investment homes that say, hey, we can't have the right, uh, you know, renters in there. So they may want to sell. So there might be, a, I saw a lot of uh, verbiage around that too. So yeah, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a busy time. Uh, we're coming into a really busy, busy season right now, uh, this summer, where people are really ready to, to I think, to really get active uh, in the real estate market. So yeah, well, info. yeah, yeah. And, and I, I can tell you for sure, because, you know, we do track um, uh, to some extent, not every transaction, right? But overall trends, and we see more and more um, uh, people um, that either are relocating, even if it's locally, like from one city to another, because of uh, you know things that happen in their area, or maybe just to you know the house was too small to uh, uh, be quarantined for the last three months, so they're looking to change that. Uh, you know, not necessarily like a bigger house. Uh, Richard is saying like yes. Uh, not necessarily a bigger house, but maybe like maybe maybe a bigger yard, maybe maybe a place with uh, you know different amenities, maybe a place with lower HOA because it was maybe like a waste of money. There's a lot of angles to it, right? Uh, and of course, also people are moving out of state. So so be be creative with your marketing, uh, especially especially you know I'm not saying it's you, know, you have to do it you know to change completely, but definitely take advantage of what we're teaching you over and over again uh, with our KW command. Facebook ads campaign to add that or to focus mostly on that to, to put those ad the, the word out there through the technology so people can see it on the phone they can they can see you every day basically and send the message out uh, of what you know just to create that curiosity and get get the engagement so people are once again this is the best time right now because things are reopening right now right to a certain extent many 
Yeah, a, a lot of schools too. If, if you guys, I mean, I don't have children, so this was kind of news to me. Now they're all talking about reopening. They're taking, uh, you know, surveys from the parents. So we've seen a big increase of inquiries from families who were holding off moving because they weren't sure what the next school year was going to bring. So that's a great phone call for you guys to make to any of your parent clients asking them, you know, has your school decided whether or not they're going to reopen, you know, are, are you wanting to get settled in before school starts back up? Because that is something that's kind of new information that's come out over the past couple of weeks. So make sure you're leveraging that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just put a, uh, like a, a, uh, a question on the, on the chat uh, for whoever's attending. Um, are you voting yes or no? Uh, sorry, that was a, it was supposed to be yes in both, but both yes and no in capital. So, so um, uh, to to open the schools, I I'm just just I can imagine the parents like say like yes 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 <laughs> maybe uh, after being you know quarantined like uh, three months with the kids. <clears throat> um, but that that's that's uh, that's interesting because uh, also like you know safety wise, I, I mean I didn't add it to to, the, to this theming section. We're going to talk about it next week. Um, I'm actually working to bring a very, very special guest to next team, next week's team meeting. Um, but, um, you know, COVID cases only increasing in a lot of areas, right? Not all the areas, but in, in, it's still happening out there. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting, uh, evolution of life again. Right. Um, okay. Right. Thank you for sharing, guys. Um, good insight. Bold, uh, launching again in July. <clears throat> Many of you, uh, and to be more accurate, uh, nationwide, about 40,000 40, agents, not just KWs, were participating um, in the bold that was launched in May. Um, so same thing, uh, the, the, you know, the, this coming round. I do think it's gonna, you know, they're gonna tweak a few things. Uh, based on the first, you know, launch experience of this live stream, live stream. So uh, only nine, 99 bucks, that's an investment uh, for four weeks um, coaching. So, you know, there's a lot of like the different variations of content. I do believe it works, even if you've done it, you know, uh, at least one time before, or many times before, I, I took it seven times myself. Um, I partially took the, the online to wherever I could plug my, my find my, the, the, the right time. But uh, the, the, my favorite session was, was when Gary Keller also was kind of jumping in. Uh, so it, it's kind of cool to have it. And of course, uh, it's, it's virtual and so, uh, you know, those things are recorded. So it's easier to, um, to participate. So bold, uh, this is the link and um, we can share that as well with you via email. Uh, look at what's happening uh, the rest of this week. We have uh, one o'clock uh, mortgage news and updates with the uh, House American Financial team. Uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Click Corporation Claw, that's the West Side MLS with uh, Rich. Uh, tomorrow, our coaching uh, sessions in the morning. Um, and um, 11 a.m., we have incredible panel at um, which I didn't add, apologies, I didn't add the flyer. But you all got it, uh, saw it. Go to the KW Shares group, look at the, uh, at the flyer. We have amazing panel. I did a shout out on my Facebook uh, page, my personal page. Uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow, it's gonna be moderated by Holly and Stephanie. I'm just gonna be on the side. I'm gonna serve coffee and, and you, know, you know, do whatever they ask me to do. And uh, we have, uh, this actually uh, was changed to Friday. We have uh, uh, the PPP webinar recent updates and news and everything. This is actually Friday at 12. This is not on, uh, tomorrow, it's Friday at 12 p.m. And um, we have uh, me and Patricia a session tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. about Facebook business page. And then um, I have another session at 1 p.m. on Friday after the 12 p.m. CPA about property, single property websites. So that's our uh, coming soon, coming up training. Uh, this coming Saturday, not Sunday, because Sunday is Father's Day, and most of you probably going to have, uh, you know, plans. We're going to have a pre-Father's Day um, hike, or family hike. It's going to take place in um, 8 a.m. I know it's I know it's too late, but it's better late than, than ever. Uh, Saturday at 8 a.m. 
uh, Fryman, Fryman Canyon in Studer City. There is uh, street parking and um, also uh, over here on the left, you can see the picture of the park, but on the right, there's like a you know, parking area as well. This is the address. I'm gonna do also another promotion for that so you guys can participate. Uh, face mask are mandatory. If you don't have one, uh, you can do it the hack yourself, but we're gonna do it as a group. You know, once again, distancing and we're gonna put the face mask on. Uh, it's a pet friendly uh, hike as well, trail. Uh, I don't know what other people, you know, will do when they're gonna show up if uh, like that, not part of our group, we're gonna put face mask and face mask. So if you're comfortable, join us. If you're not comfortable, not, not a problem, do your, do your, do your thing. Uh, but we will slowly, you know, kind of like, you know, in, in a very cautious and respectful way going, uh, going back in shape, I guess. Um, that's all we have. Anything else that you want to add? Anybody on the panel? Okay. Okay, guys. So that's all we have. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time and participation and stay safe. Stay, um, stay on top of things. Stay uh, focused and busy and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you out there virtually, in, in fact, in the offices. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Manny. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you.